From the Field Bus Foundation Training Center at Lee College, Control in the Field, Part 1. Sponsored by Asbill, Andresen Hauser, Yokogawa, and other Foundation members. One of the questions that uh, comes up all the time in our classes here is the discussion concerning control in the field versus control in the host. So fortunately, because the arrangements we have, we can actually experiment with those and let the, let the clients and the students go through that same process and then judge for themselves what's happening. Uh, so what we're going to be doing here is looking at a control system that has already been developed where we have a simple differential pressure flow device. Uh, we have, a, uh, again, a control valve tied to that. And it's fairly simple PID control with the flow coming out of the flow transmitter and being controlled by the flow valve. Initially, we have this set up as a control in the host item with the PID. And what we're going to do is we're going to see you know, what it takes as we swap between control in the host and control in the field. Now, we don't have enough time in this particular uh, sequence to look at all the research that can go on around this. But the intent here is just to say, what does it require to swap between these two items uh, and see how they operate? Okay, so for right now, uh, we'll take the case where at this stage, we're, we've got our flow transmitter, our flow valve. We have the PID control uh, is in the host, and we've been operating. You know, it's been fine, and the scenario is pretty simple that we set up in the class. You've, uh, dis you've re read the literature, you've gone to management, you've looked at the uh, information on the foundation website, maybe talked to some other engineers who have experienced this, and you've made the decision that, okay, I think I'd like to do this. I'd like to try this control in the field and see what it takes to accomplish that, see how well it works. So, of course, the first step in that is to get the PID control, which right now is in the host system, and to get that PID control brought into one of my devices. The most common, uh, I guess almost an accepted practice, is uh, we would like to put the PID in the valve. It does not have to be there. It could be, in this case, in the transmitter, or in reality, even in another device, but that wouldn't normally make a lot of sense. Uh, so what we want to actually do is say, in this case, we're going to put the PID control in the valve and, uh, and then load it, build it, configure it, and see what steps are required to get the PID out of the host and placed into the valve, and then, of course, to test the operation to see that it works effectively. Uh, from that point, once you've seen the success of doing that, of course, you can make decisions about what other areas of the plant you may want to begin using this control in the field with. So, uh, you know, first let's just uh, take a quick look at the, at the loop operating with the control in the host. And so right now the controller is about midpoint for the set point, so we'll uh, ask our student to raise and lower the set point a little bit, maybe take it up to uh, 10 gallons a minute and bring it back down a bit. And, of course, we'll see that reflected on the chart, the, F the FC100 chart. And at this stage, we're not really tuned optimally uh, because that's, that's going to vary from plant to plant, and, you know, uh, control loop to control loop. But you can see it is uh, catching the set point that the process is coming up, the valve's matching it. And go ahead and bring it down. We don't have to really wait for it to, to settle, and that's bring a good number. Down to 40. Yep. And likewise, we see the valve closing. I can actually hear the valve closing in the background as well, which may not be possible in a control room, but <laughs> here we're in a common lab, so that kind of helps us on the feedback side of it. But also I might note that at the top of the valve, at the top of the control uh, window at the PID controller, we'll see a digital value, uh, and that digital value is actually set up to show the true stem position not the implied stem position. So the operator can look on this screen right away and know that my valve has moved to a particular position, which is, means that there's no need to necessarily send somebody out to the field to go look at the position. So they have much faster feedback on what's going on with the process equipment. In this case, 30 point something. Percent. In this case, 30 point some percent. Okay, one of the other things that uh, we, we have students practice with here 
uh, here at the Field Bus Center at Lake College is that while we accomplish this on one given host, the basic process required on other host systems uh, may be slightly different, but the screens are very, very, very similar. Uh, the general process really remains largely the same. So once you have experienced this and you've experienced converting or building control in the field, and you move it to other hosts, again, of course, there might be a certain screen you have to look at, a certain key you might have to hit that may vary from host to host. They all have their little interest, intricacies. But again, the process is, is highly, highly similar. And, uh, and, and in all cases, as a final thought, of course, we always test this when we're completed to make sure that what we our expectations are met and it's going to operate absolutely as intended. And that, of course, is a absolute, uh, not just a recommendation, that should be a, a, a insisted upon in any facility as you go through this process, just like you would do with regular analog or traditional loops. Okay, so uh, now if you don't mind, let's go to the control window. Uh, and this again is a live picture of the control scheme showing a flow transmitter, in this case FT-101, feeding a value, uh, producing and feeding a value to the PID block, which is in the host, and this is somewhat identified because there's no tag or anything associated with the PID block. And then the PID block sending a control signal out to the valve, to the valve positioner, which is uh, shown at the bottom as FV-101. So this is our control in the host operating. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna want to remove this from the host control and place it into field control. It would be wonderful if we could just say, hey, let's just associate this block to a host device and have everything set for us, but that's not always gonna be the case. So we're gonna look at probably what I call the manual method of making all these changes. So the first step in this one is to go ahead and close the close. online view. Okay. Be here. Which takes us to a configuration window, an offline configuration window. Uh, again, we could attempt, since we have a PID block here, uh, right click on the PID block and a window will show up which asks us to assign the I.O. So if you scroll to assign I.O. and now we're going to assign it to field bus. Okay, the first thing it wants to know is which device do you want to place the PID control in. Uh, again, it's really the user's choice here. I could have a temperature transmitter out there with a PID block I wanted to use to control my flow. It wouldn't make a lot of sense. Uh, and what normally makes the most sense is either place the PID in one of the associated devices, the transmitter or, or the valve. Okay. Again, it'll depend on certain plant practices, but we generally do it in the valve because we're very comfortable that the algorithm for that PID is written for that valve and is going to operate that valve you know, fairly well. So uh, go to the browse window and let's uh, select the FV101, which is our valve. Now, just to ask you, Chuck, what is this a list of all the instruments that the, I'm seeing on my segment? Is that? This is a list of list all the what? instruments that are currently configured, that have been commissioned on your segment. And so again, any of them that have PID could be used, but we're going to use FV101. FV and then just say OK. And the uh, blocks that have not been used that are allowable within this instrument will show up. So there's your PID yeah, block yeah. as FFPID7. So go ahead and select that and say OK. And then another OK. And we'll notice at the bottom of the, of the block itself, it now says FV101, telling us that here's where this control is going to be associated. So with that being done, we do want to check and make sure that the uh, points, that the various values are going to be sent to this block correctly. And so we're going to go to the actual looking at the configuration side of the parameters, which is on the left hand side of your window. And you might make that a little wider so that we don't have to open up a lot of windows. A little more, there you go. Uh, and again, I've got this set for alphabetic because I understand ABC better than I do other things. And so we'll look at a couple of key parameters. Of course, one of them is going to be the process value being sent to this control block. Uh, the process value coming out of the AI block is 0 to 100 GPM. So in this case, we'll go to PV value and take a look at it. And again, if you make that a little wider of a screen where it says default up top, or at the very top, yeah, uh, go to where it says uh, default, yes, make that a little wider. Okay, uh, we can read it on one window. So it shows already it has retained that 0 to 100 GPM. 
The output scaling is 0, 100% for the valve. Uh, there's a few things we could set in here as well. We could look at the set point limits for an example, but they are still 0 and 100. Of course, those limits can be adjusted according to the needs of the plant. Uh, we might look at control ops while we're at it. And double click that one if you don't mind. And again, here's a few things that we could set, like use set point for our cast is one. Well, one, one that often gets set is uh, the tracking values. So if you'll scroll down to uh, set point track and man, and just okay. click on that, and say OK. That wasn't being okay. used with the control in the host, but we've decided at this time, let's go ahead and use it while we're at it. Uh, it's really primary values that are there. Uh, let's look at the gain and reset while we're at it as well, because remember this thing was somewhat tuned, even though not optimally. And we'll see gain. on gain that it's retained the original settings that were in it already. So there's not a whole lot to do here, uh, other than really to save this. Okay. And then to go ahead and download it. And then say download now. Yes, we want and then as it downloads, we'll go ahead and respond to some calls and emails and a few other things and let it go through its download process. It and pays this, to be patient here. This is now downloading everything yes. to the um, valve, right? Yes, yes. So we'll go ahead and say download uh, anyway. Download anyway. Again, there were some alarm settings in there that it, asked, it said it was looking for some, but We'll make those a little later. We'll take care of that. Right now, we're just getting the host, you know, getting the control out of the host into the device and other changes we can make as we go through and optimize the loop. And this process will take a couple minutes. I, I find it very good to, again, be very patient. Uh, this is a one-time thing that we're having to deal with. And rather than try to multitask a lot here, just let it, let it take its time, let it get done, and then we'll go from that point. Now what you're looking at now is you're seeing the device being downloaded and uh, some of the items show like a FB, meaning a function block. So we're actually seeing the function blocks being reloaded. Uh, we had a few other things here too. This was originally, we had it set up as a cascade. We had taken that out of the picture. Uh, for the purpose of this demonstration. So we may see a few things like a temperature transmitter being reloaded uh, because of that operation, which really didn't have anything to do with single loop control that we're doing right now. Okay. okay. And no red flags, no check boxes, no, gee, I failed, it downloaded nicely, so say good. close this, All right. and you can uh, make it a little more narrow, not too much, because uh, we'll want to see some live values, and go ahead and go okay. to the online view, All right. because it's obviously critical that these loops be tested after this process is done, if nothing else, just so you get a good sense of, hey, this, this seems to be working. Uh, not just seems to, it is. So now we have the control in the device. Uh, we can see the values again being sent. And if we go back to the operate window, okay. we'll see number one that we are still, you know, in this case, uh, we have it set that on download it goes to manual. Uh, you might notice, in fact, let's do something. Let's open that valve just a little bit with the blue triangle. Okay, yeah. Just a bit, about 10% or so is fine. <laughs> I say a little bit. 10% may not be a little bit in some operations. So the now process we went up, and one change you'll see now is that the set point is tracking the uh, process value, uh, which is one of the settings that we had made. So that does also confirm for us that all the settings got into this block. So now we're actually running on uh, control within and the device. And uh, no big jumps, no big anything happening here, just nice smooth transition from one method to the other.